Hey, good morning, everybody. It is another day in the studio. Uh, it's been a while since I did a video of something I photographed in the studio, but that's what we're going to do today. I have a high-end product photography idea that I want to do. I've been wanting to do it for a while. Um, there's actually a few versions I want to do of it, so we'll call today's attempt version one. <laughs> Um, before I dive into that, however, I want to do one quick little stock shot, and I don't know if about you guys, but I'm always constantly thinking about what things to photograph for stock. Um, sometimes I just randomly shoot what happens to be there, but a lot of what I do for stock photography takes some planning and some, some thought behind it because I don't want to shoot things that aren't ever going to sell. So years ago, I took this photograph right here of this coffee cup, and I think I've shown it before, but... Um, I just happened to go get coffee at this bagel place. The cup itself was so generic, I thought that would be good for stock. I photographed it on white, sent it in, and it is sold like crazy. Um, I meant to check this morning, but I failed to do so. But it, I, it's safe for me to say that it has made hundreds of dollars over the last few years. So yesterday I went and got myself a soda, and this was the cup that they had. Very generic. So... I'm going to quickly do a photograph of this on white, see if it has the same success as that coffee cup. And after we bang that shot out, we'll go into the uh, more creative high end. But yeah, let's get going. there was to that. Okay, so on to the main shot for today. I want to do a little bit more high-end image, and I've been wanting to do this product shot for a while. And so today's the day, at least version one of this thing. I've got a couple of... I originally wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to photograph uh, something high-end. My wife's Chanel number no. five. And one of the reasons I've kind of dragged my feet on this is hers is not very full. And I see this thing sitting on a surface but being full. So I thought I need to go purchase one that's full. And when I started planning out the shoot uh, before I went and purchased a new one, um, I looked up some images online. And what I found was a lot of times they shoot them laying flat. Now that doesn't mean I need to do it for my shot, but I thought, you know, I laid Amy's flat and it she's got enough in there that it looks pretty good. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to shoot it with the X100. It's not really a product camera with a 23 millimeter lens on it, but I'm going to use that camera today because, because I can and I want to. Okay, so I've got this background. I've had this marble background for years. Never really done very much with it. It is a chessboard. I think it might make an interesting background. As far as the product itself is going to go, a couple of things we got to do as far as lighting. And if I've said this once, I've said it a million times. I'm sure I've seen it, said it on this channel before. Lighting is the key um, that separates the good from the bad, separates the good from the great. So we got to get some amazing lighting on this thing. And it's going to be super important to light up the label and get some nice reflections and some shadows and some highlights. And it's just laying this down on this checkerboard is simple, but getting good, clean lighting is gonna be the key. I'll do a little montage here as I set things up and kind of tweak things. I don't wanna bore you with all of the figuring it out, but I will explain it as I get done and we'll make a beautiful photograph out of this. One of the things I wanna make sure to do is level the camera to make sure that it is sitting perfectly flat. Um, with the assumption that the bottle sits flat and it seems like it's sitting pretty flat. 
So my camera needs to sit flat as well because if the camera is at an angle, if the digital sensor plane is different than the subject plane, I'm gonna get those converging lines. Now, a wide angle lens is gonna give me some uh, odd things anyway, so I've backed the camera off a little bit just because you know, you're starting to get some of that distortion from the wide angle lens. And, and I can probably correct a little bit of that in cam or in post. Um, I don't wanna do too much if I don't have to though. So I've just backed off a little bit, make sure that the camera is level and then we'll get to uh, lighting this thing. <laughs> Okay, so here's the setup so far. Grid spot here, let me see if I can zoom in and, yeah, there we go. One grid spot shining right on the set. I got my little glass trick that I got the light shining through, hopefully giving it some streaks, although I'm not getting them like I wanted. Camera, of course. I've got these little cards right here, casting shadows on the sides. I've got one little mirror, knocking a little bit of light into this side of it, and I've got one fill card over here adding some light. Now I've played with black cards on this side. I've played with white cards on that side, trying to get the whole thing the way I wanted it. Looks pretty good, but it's not as moody as I want. So we need to work on that a little bit. Okay, a couple things. Number one, I got to get this thing back into manual focus. So I've got my manual back out because I need to remember how to put it back in manual focus. I love the autofocus on this camera, but I don't want in this situation for it to be jumping around every time I take a new photo. I want to get the focus set and know that it's on the money each time I trigger it. The other problem that I'm seeing, like I said, this really isn't a great camera for product photography, but since I've got it mounted to my studio stand, to get access to the memory card, I've got to take it off of there to get that card out, which is a problem because every time I take it out to go check it in the computer to make sure everything's looking great, I gotta move the camera. And that's not great and ideal for product photography. The way around that I'm sure is just to shoot to the computer via Bluetooth or shoot to a my phone or something. I, had, I may have to try to figure that out too because yeah, I need to figure it out anyway, so. Okay, here's the image. I'll show it to you right here. I am not loving it and I think what I don't like about it is it just seems a little flat. Might be a little bit underexposed but I really think the problem is it's underlit. Uh, the lighting is just even though it's coming out of that grid and even though I've got those glasses in front of it it still seems a little on the flat lighting side. It needs a little more pizzazz. So um, I actually have a lunch date today so I'm going to run out and do some lunch I promise you it will be going through my head what I can do differently lighting-wise. And when I get back, we're going to tweak the lighting and we're going to nail the shot because I like it. It's really close. It's just, you know, we're back to that glory and excellence thing where I'm I'm 90%, 80% there maybe. And that last 10 or 15 is what it needs to uh, really be great and be a portfolio piece. So I'm not, I'm not minding the X100 perspective of it. It's pretty cool. That's all really good. It seems, you know, I still have it on manual focus and it seems to be nailing it every time, even in the dark, which is another drawback because the settings on the camera, I've got the shutter speed at 1 to 50th of a second, F11, and with just the modeling light on in, or just the room lights, I can't see through, I can't see through the EVF to get a clear image on the screen. When the strobe goes off, then of course it's the correct exposure, but uh, that makes it a little tricky to see when you're viewing it beforehand. So that's another obvious drawback, but uh, the camera seems to be focusing right on the money every time. It's got that nice clear label to do that with. So all is well. I am going to take a quick break, be right back, and you guys, it'll be that fast. So I'll see you in just a second. I'm back from lunch, did some thinking about this. Um, one of the things I did is I took the grid spot off of the light thinking might make my light a little snappier, but it really didn't. So I'm back to where I was and let me show you. The only thing that I've really done is I moved this light in a little bit tighter, probably brought it down a touch, 
glasses. I, I played with the glasses, position of the glasses a little bit, and everything else pretty much remained the same. I still have this white fill card out here. I just tweaked the light a little bit, moved the glasses a little bit, and let me show you what I'm getting. Let me show you this view as well, kind of overall view of the set. And let me show you what I'm getting. I'm gonna crop so you can't see the table, of course. But yeah, I'm not hating that. Bring it into the computer and see if we like it. Okay, wait, hold, hold on to everything. I just stuck a white card underneath the Chanel, thinking I didn't like seeing the checkerboard through the perfume bottle. There's where I was. Let's see here, there's where I was. I, th I just threw that under there to see. And yeah, maybe that's a little bit better. Okay, yeah, that might be a little bit better. So what I've got to do is I've got to cut out a nice piece of paper to set behind there so that it you can't see it sticking out of the ends. I'm thinking that might be the trick. So I'm gonna do that, shoot another one, bring it into the computer, see what I think. that's better what do you guys think okay guys I think that's just about got it I will show you the final image right here had to do a little bit of tweaking to it not much straight out of the camera just a little bit of contrast tweak the exposure ever so slightly and of course crop out the table and come up with a really nice image I think it went well um, but let me show you some technical some hardware stuff uh, for those of you who get into that x100 v I think I proved that it's not the ideal product camera, not for this type of product, um, although I think the results are good. 23 millimeter lens is not ideal for that. Um, I think we made it work, but small product like this probably needs a little bit longer lens. Um, I had my cable release to uh, fire the shutter, push it halfway, it worked really well, focused for me, did all the work. F9, I ended up at F9, 160 ISO. And then I've got a little Ellen Chrome Radio Slave. This is not dedicated to a Nikon, Fuji, Canon, anything like that. This is universal. You can put it on any camera. Uh, the receivers on the light itself worked super well. No complaints about that. Just not the most ideal product camera. If I can shoot to a laptop or shoot to an iPad or something like that, that would make a huge difference. I will get that figured out in the next few days and... For now, I think we'll call that a successful shoot. As always, guys, if you have comments, questions, or complaints, leave them down below. I love getting your comments. I've had a lot of them recently, and I appreciate every single one of them. I do my best to keep up with them and answer you. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing that. We're starting to climb the ladder a little bit in terms of subscribers, and I appreciate that as well. So I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great day. Okay, one of the things that kind of excited me about this camera is to get out this old trigger release from back in my film camera days. Um, it actually works with this camera.